a good recommendation to anyone needing an audio recording device for recording any type of audio, such as podcast and video, is to purchase the Zoom H1N. The Zoom H1N replaced the previous Zoom H1. You will find many pro videographers and podcasters that consider the Zoom H1N as a must-have digital audio recording tool. The Zoom H1N is small, portable, pocketable, and can greatly improve the quality of your audio. It never ceases to amaze me how people use a seemingly inexpensive tool to do great things where others overlook the use of the same tool, thinking they have to have larger, more elaborate tools. The Zoom H1N may be small and relatively inexpensive, but in the real world of recording quality audio, the Zoom H1N is capable of recording excellent audio in a variety of audio recording situations, even having the ability to be used as a USB mic to record directly to your computer into a digital audio workstation like Audacity. There are many excellent videos on YouTube about the Zoom H1N. I will include a few links to YouTube videos about the Zoom H1N and Zoom H1 in the description area for this video. I was intrigued and fascinated how such a small and relatively inexpensive digital recorder like the Zoom H1, with the current version being the Zoom H1N, could record excellent audio. The world is full of interesting sounds and people to record. Having an interest in interviewing people, I was fascinated by the idea that a digital recorder so small, yet able to record excellent audio, could also be adapted to record two microphones, with each of the two microphones recorded to a separate audio track. One small digital recorder with two lapel microphones is easier to carry in your pocket or backpack than a larger XLR digital recorder, two XLR microphones, and microphone cables. Having a digital recorder in my pocket or backpack with two lapel microphones ready to record an interview should opportunity present itself appeals to me. Ever hear that expression, the best camera you can own is the one you have with you? The Zoom H1N and the previous model, the Zoom H1, are so small and compact, it is easy to have with you. So you could say that the Zoom H1N or Zoom H1 could be the best digital recorder you could own because it is easier to have this digital audio recorder with you. The Zoom H1N and the Zoom H1 has only one microphone input, which is a 3.5 millimeter mic jack. You can use the external microphone to record or plug in lavaliers or a regular microphone into the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. This video will show you how you can create two 3.5 millimeter input jacks on the Zoom H1N or Zoom H1 that would allow you to record two people, each person having their own separate lavalier mic with each person being recorded on a separate audio track. Larger digital recorders such as Zoom H5 or Zoom H6 have multiple XLR jacks allowing several people to connect with each microphone 
being recorded to a separate track. However, with the larger recorders comes a larger purchase price, and you lose some of the portability of a small digital recorder like the Zoom H1N or Zoom H1. The small size makes the Zoom H1N and Zoom H1 ideal for portable on-the-go audio recording. Okay, now for the tutorial showing you how to connect two microphones to the Zoom H1N or the Zoom H1 with each microphone being recorded to a separate track. I will show you how to connect two microphones into one 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. This is particularly useful for interviews when you want to record two people with each person being recorded on a separate audio track. By recording each person on a separate audio track, you will be able to edit each audio track separately. And Set the volume levels on each track separately, which is particularly useful when one person is talking louder or quieter than the other person. This shows the recording equipment needed to have two microphones plugged into one 3.5 millimeter jack. The names and URLs where to purchase this equipment is shown in the description area for this video. To have this same setup, you would need to purchase two lapel microphones by Power DYs, the stereo breakout cable, and a digital audio recorder. The red lines show how and in what order the digital recorder, a stereo breakout cable, and two lapel microphones are to be connected. The lapel microphone plugged into the black colored jack of the stereo breakout cable will be recorded to the left channel, which is the left track on the audio file. And the lapel microphone plugged into the red colored jack of the stereo breakout cable will be recorded to the right channel, which is the right track of the audio file. You can keep the audio tracks as recorded, with the audio recorded on the left channel being heard predominantly out of the left speaker, and the audio recorded on the right channel being heard predominantly out of the right channel. Or, after editing the left and right audio tracks, you can merge both the left and right audio tracks into one mono audio track. Later on in this video, I will show you how to export the audio either as a stereo file or as a mono file. For voice interviews, it is recommended to export as a mono file to make it easier for the listener by having the same volume levels coming out of the left and right speakers. This is what you get when you purchase the Power Dewise Lavalier microphone. With each microphone purchase, you will get the lapel microphone, mono adapter, extra wind muff, extension cord, and a storage case. Zoom recently introduced, late in the year of 2020, a new 32-bit float recorder called the Zoom F2. Currently, the Zoom F2 is temporarily out of stock. However, you can place your order now and receive the Zoom F2 once stores begin to receive new shipments. Some people already have received the Zoom F2 digital recorder, and many have made YouTube videos reviewing 
the Zoom F2. Simply enter Zoom F2 in YouTube's search window, and you will find many videos reviewing the Zoom F2. This same setup using a stereo breakout cable to be able to use two lavalier microphones with each microphone being recorded to a separate audio track should also work with the Zoom F2. However, since the Zoom F2 is currently on back order, I am not able to test the Zoom F2 using a stereo breakout cable connected to the Zoom F2 with two lavalier microphones to see if each lavalier microphone would record to a separate track, as is the case with the Zoom H1N and Zoom H1. But in theory, I think this same setup would also work with the newly introduced Zoom F2 32-bit float digital recorder. Because the Zoom F2 is not currently shipping to stores, I was not able to secure a Zoom F2 to try it out to see if this setup would work, same as it does with the Zoom H1N and Zoom H1. If this method of using two microphones also works on the Zoom F2 as it does on the Zoom H1 and Zoom H1N, then the Zoom F2 would also be a great portable digital recorder for doing interviews with the ability to record from two microphones, with the additional benefit of having 32-bit float recording. The following is a sample recording with the lapel mics connected to the Zoom H1 as shown in this diagram. With the lapel mics being approximately five feet from each other when the audio was recorded. The recorded audio file on the digital audio recorder can be copied to your computer either by removing the micro SD card from the digital audio recorder and using a card reader to copy the audio file from the micro SD card to your computer. Or just connect a USB cable from your digital audio recorder to your computer to copy the audio file directly from the digital audio recorder to your computer. The Zoom H1 uses a mini USB cable and the Zoom H1N uses a micro USB cable to transfer audio files from the digital audio recorder to the computer. The following audio was recorded with the Zoom H1 with two lapel microphones connected to the Zoom H1 using a stereo breakout cable. With the lapel mics being a distance of about five feet apart, alternating speaking between the two lapel microphones, with one lapel microphone hooked up to the left channel and the other lapel microphone hooked up to the right channel. I'm going to drag this down so we can see the waveforms a little bit easier, make it larger. And I'll play what we have and notice the meter top right. There's two tracks. We have the left track and the right track, and we'll play it and let you give it a listen. This demonstration interview is where you have two people, about five people. See, that's the left track. You see how the I am speaking into the live mic. Left track is higher. Black colored microphone jack on the stereo breakout cable which means that this is being recorded to the left channel 
and now I'm going to leave this live mic and speak to the other channel, which would be the right channel. This is the right channel. Now the sound's coming out the right channel, and you see it's higher distance, about five inches volume than the left channel. On the right channel. And so this live mic is plugged into the red colored jack on the stereo breakout cable. So again, speaking into the right mic. And this live mic is plugged into the red colored jack on the stereo breakout cable. Now I will switch over to the left mic again. Switching over to the left mic, left mic, left mic on the black jack on the stereo breakout cable. Back to the red jack stereo breakout cable. Red jack stereo breakout cable. Now let me show you after you make the recording, how to edit the left and right channels separately in Audacity. And again, one of my primary uses of using a stereo breakout cable is to be able to record two people on one recorder and still be able to edit each person's audio separately using Audacity Audio Editor. You'll see a left and right track. The left track was a lapel plugged into the black colored jack on the stereo breakout cable. And the right track was a lapel plugged into the red colored jack on the stereo breakout cable. To be able to edit each track separately, what I'm referring to is the left track and the right track, to be able to edit the left track separately as well as edit the right track separately, you have to select some items in uh, Audacity to make it happen. Otherwise, if you double click to select all of it, it selects both the left and right track. So let's take that off. And what you do to be able to edit each track separately, click on Menu. See this drop down arrow right here? Click on that and choose either split stereo to mono or split stereo track. Split stereo to mono splits into two mono tracks, allowing you to edit each track separately. After editing, the exported WAV file will be in mono, not stereo, or split stereo track to keep audio in stereo, allowing you to edit each track separately. After editing, the exported WAV file will be in stereo, not mono. The left track's audio will be heard from the left speaker, and the right track's audio will be heard from the right speaker. Example, if you wanted the person recorded on the left to be heard on the left speaker, and the person recorded on the right to be heard on the right speaker, then choose Split Stereo Track. To summarize, prior to editing each track, if you want the final edited audio to be mono, choose 
split stereo to mono. And if you want the final edited audio to be stereo, choose split stereo track. If you choose split stereo to mono, when you export the WAV file, the WAV file will be in mono. And when you export the WAV file to split stereo track, the WAV file will be in stereo. For this video demonstration, I am going to choose split stereo to mono. And see how you can work on whichever track that you want. Now we can edit just that track. So now let's edit just this track. I'm going to go down and mute the right track. At this point, you will want to edit the left track and the right track separately. When editing the left track, mute the audio in the right track. And when editing the right track, mute the audio in the left track. You should set the loudness level of each track to the same loudness. YouTube's loudness audio suggestion is minus 14 luff and minus 1 true peak max. If you set the loudness level of each track at minus 14 luff and minus 1 true peak max, each track will be at the same loudness level. I will not demonstrate how to edit audio on this video. However, on this video channel, there is a video entitled Audacity Audio Editing Workflow for Podcast and Video that teaches you how to edit audio using Audacity, including showing you how to set the loudness level of the audio. Shown here are the same original left and right audio tracks. After editing the left and right track separately. By editing each one, we were able to get the volume levels to match each other. Now the next thing we'll do is actually export this audio. And I want to export it as a WAV file. Export. WAV. And let's... Let's find a place to put it here. Let's just wave. Let's just say two tracks merged. It says your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one mono file, which is actually what we want. This is being exported to a mono file. Because earlier, prior to editing this audio, we chose split stereo to mono. If we had chosen split stereo track prior to editing this audio, then at this point, the file would be exported to a stereo file, not a mono file. And you would not see this message stating, your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one mono file. So let's click OK. Our audio track has been merged into one. Let's go file. Let's find it.
put it right here in Wave. We call it two tracks merged. We open it with Audacity. So right here, we have one audio track. What we have been able to do is to use a small, quality, portable, and affordable digital audio recorder with only one 3.5 millimeter microphone jack and use a stereo breakout cable to connect two lavalier microphones with each lavalier microphone being recorded to a separate audio track and then edit each audio track separately, including editing both audio tracks to have the same loudness level and export the audio either to a stereo or mono file. I hope you will find that the simplicity, accessibility, and portability a small digital recorder offers will allow you to record more unique, interesting audio in more places than you ever thought possible. Thanks for watching. Please visit our website, optuno.org, that's spelled O-P-O-R-T-U-N-O dot O-R-G, for more items that may be of interest to you. Thank you.